Ask the Podcast Coach for August 12, 2023. Let's get ready to podcast. There it is. It's that music that means it's Saturday morning. It's time for Ask the Podcast Coach, where you get your podcast questions answered live. I'm Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting dot com and joining me right over there is the one and only jim cullison from the average guy dot tv jim I, I have a question for you wow i know getting, right, getting right off yeah. on it i like it <laughs> I, I always promote the average guy dot tv yeah but should i be promoting home gadget geeks dot com it doesn't matter either okay. one i mean either one works the sites the average guy dot tv the home gadget geeks points to the pod page and i use both so there you go fun. but yeah. ladies and gentlemen jim cullison right there Gr- greetings, Dave. Happy Saturday morning to you. I know. You throw me off my rhythm. I, I, <laughs> I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and we are a few minutes late to the live, folks. Apologize for that. But uh, we're, we're but there's here. a reason for that. Yeah. Um, he said, looking frantically for the music that he can't find uh, because it sounds like, nope, I was going to do this. But that's no, that's really the that wrong one. sound. Not it's um, no, no, It's no. this one. Yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We have a new patron. Um, his name is Craig Van Slyke. The website livewellandflourish.com. And what's amazing about Craig is he's an amazing dude. Like, i I known Craig. He's a member of the School of Podcasting. So he's now, he's double dipping. He's double supporting Dave. But he's, uh, is the Mike McAllister Eminent Scholar Chair in information systems at Louisiana Tech University. Prior to joining Tech, he was a professor and a dean of the W.A. Frank College of Business at Northern Arizona University. He also held faculty positions at St. Louis University, University of Central Florida, and Ohio University. He holds a Ph.D. We got smart people listening to the show. Wow. Wow. In information systems from the University of South Florida. Dr. Van Slyke, I've been just calling him Craig. It's Dr. Van Slyke has published over 30 articles in respective uh, academic journals, including Decision Sciences, Communications of the ACM, European Journal of Information Systems, and the Journal of the Association for Information Systems. His fourth co-authored textbook, textbook, baby, textbook, uh, Information Systems and Business and Experiential Approach, is in its third edition, not first, not second, third, uh, and his first trade book on leadership in life, Essays on Leading and Living Well was published back in 2017. I could go on and on. He's a very smart man. But what I want to do instead is I want to actually play you a clip of Craig because I like Craig's, his his show, um, excuse me, Dr. Van Slykes. His show <laughs> is a great walk around the uh, walk around the block kind of show. It's usually around 10, 15 minutes. But he did one on guilt. And here's just a quick clip. But it can be a soul. Oh, see, this is where Dave didn't set up the button right. Uh, Hold on. You know what? We will play his clip when we get to because I got to I got to let that play through. This is where can I I can go back to the beginning. It won't go back to the beginning. That's the Uh, problem is I'm like one shot. Okay, let's see if we can do this now. I hate this about the um, the duo. I used to just, I, I have to set that as a setting. That's the point. Okay, we'll try this again. The one and only Craig Vance like, Dr. Craig Vance like. The dark side of guilt is that it can be a soul crushing emotion, especially when you feel guilty about feeling guilty, which is its own special kind of hell. But when guilt serves as a sort of diagnostic tool, it can help you live a flourishing life. There you go. I found that one really handy because there are times when we beat ourselves up over stuff. We have nothing in control. And so the only thing that could make that show any better would be probably listening to it with a hot cup of of Java there. So uh, Jim's going to pour himself a cold one here or a cold one. That would be a hot one. That'd be bad. Although there is cold beer relative. I mean, it's cold to the temperature of the sun. Yeah, there we (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) And, of course, that coffee pour is brought to you by our good friend, Mark, over at podcastbranding.co. If you want to look good, uh, it's really simple because they're going to see you way before they hear you. And if you're watching the video here, you can see where uh, Mark has designed the Ask the Podcast Coach. He's designed the School of Podcasting. 
He's designed the podcast rodeo show, and I wouldn't use him multiple times if he sucked. He's amazing. He's going to sit down with you. So try to get this from a guy on Fiverr. He's going to sit down with you. He's going to listen to your show. He's going to look at your website and just make sure that everything is seamless so that you get the maximum impact for your content. And not only is he an award-winning graphic artist, he's also a podcaster. So he's going to get that whole thing about, oh, it's kind of like a radio show. No, he gets it. It's amazing. And so he's been featured all over the place. He's uh, spoken at Podcast Movement and PodFest, and he's been on this show. He's been on the School of Podcasting. And so there's only one place to go, and that is podcastbranding.co. Big thanks to uh, Dan LeFeb over there, based on a true story podcast at based on a true story podcast.com. This week, he is looking at uh, the movie Little Big Man uh, with Gregory J.W. Irwin. Uh, the story, the, uh, it's a 1970 satirical uh, film. So it, it, you were like, Little Big Man. I, yeah, it was, it was 1970. They go back and look at those. So if you're looking for something new to listen to, it, or you just want to hear a really great podcast, check it out based on a true story podcast.com. Dan, thanks for your sponsorship. And coach Dave is saying, wow, the, uh, the segment transitions this morning are smooth. Somebody <laughs> got some good sleep last night. Uh, I did actually. Uh, and I, I should mention in case you saw things on Facebook, I'm fine. I was in a car accident this week. I got rear ended. The only slight damage to me was I had a couple of bruised knuckles for a couple of days, which I was really surprised because I don't know about you, but once you get to like your 50s, it takes forever for anything to, to heal. My car is fine. It's dented. Um, nobody was hurt. But uh, you can hear about that, by the way. If you go to betterdave.com, I did a whole episode about that. But we do have our, our first question this morning is somebody was asking about um, starting a podcast for their job and i am so good at this um oh here we go i put it in green so you know as in green means go like this is where you look on the screen and yet i'm looking at all the white ones uh <laughs> can i protect my rights to a podcast if i do the podcast for work and i was like oh i know somebody who does a podcast mm -hmm. for work mm -hmm. uh, my boss wants me to start a podcast for work under the slim chances this podcast gets big and starts to generate revenue which is a bit of a head scratcher. Mm -hmm. How do I protect my rights to it? I'm the host. I'm creating the content. I came up with the idea, the name, etc. We haven't started recording it yet. So I'm trying to get ahead of the ball here. Not sure if I need to lawyer up or what a contract or, or write a contract or whatever. Has anyone been through something similar? And I was like, well, yes. Hmm. Yes, yeah. indeed. <laughs> yeah. yes, indeed. Yeah. This guy never been asked about that. Uh, ironically, but when you, uh, the first thing you should do is check what you signed when you join the organization that you're a part of now. Oftentimes, uh, for me, I'm uh, I'm under some pretty strict NDAs as well as any content I create for the organization belongs to the organization. That's what I signed when I got there. Doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the organization. Doesn't matter if it was my idea or I created it or whatever. That's the agreement I signed. Right. You, you, everybody's like, you know, some people may freak out at that, but that's, that's the agreement. I signed it. So you might want to check and see, okay, what did I agree to when I, when I joined an employment? Then I think if it's unclear with the organization, I think you should have some chats with those who, whoever HR or whatever to make sure you're very clear about this before you go forward with it. So get some things in writing, Get some clarity on it. Make sure everybody understands who owns what and who's doing what. Because this is the fastest way to lose a job, just to be honest. You can get in there. I mean, in podcasting, you can get in there and say something pretty fast that goes south pretty quick. And yeah. You want them to protect you as much as you want as you want to protect the rights of the stuff that you're making. So if it's not clear, get some get some clarity in the organization, get it in writing, and make sure everybody agrees on it. Now, are you reading a script or are you just kind of going off the top of your head? The pod, my podcast? Yeah. 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 Um, no. Well, I mean, I have intro scripts, but everything else is, I mean, we have some outlines and we've got some things. But when I, when I leave, those podcasts belong Gallup. They don't belong to me. So even right. though I was the host, it was my idea, 
all those kinds of things. It's very, very clear. It's their property. You now, are the talent. <laughs> yeah, for that, I get yeah. to use all the intellectual property that they have. And we've got a lot. And it, there's a lot of stuff to podcast on. And it's, it's done some great things for my career. There you go. And and you're now worshipped at events when you go to Gallup events. Well, right? yeah, worship's a little strong of a word. <laughs> <laughs> Revered. Maybe it's well, I was this uh, this last week. We every once in a while we have this Joe on the go come in. It's a coffee, it's like a portable coffee shop, and they come in okay. and make coffees for the employees. So I was coming in standing in line and I just walked up to one of the lines and one of my friends was there. And I said, Hey Angela, how's it going? And the 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 gal that was with Angela turned around. I said, Hey, I'm Jim Collison. She goes, Ah, oh, I love you. <laughs> and then she's like, It didn't, that wasn't meant to come out that way. Yeah. And she's like, I've been she was a new employee and she's been listening to a lot of the podcasts. And so she was just like, you know, it was just one of those moments where she's probably listened to dozens or fifties of hours of of the podcast we do, and it just kind of caught her off guard. So those kinds of things, it's kind of cool. I say, yeah. thanks for listening. I appreciate yeah. that. That's pretty awesome. W one of the cool things about what I do for the company is it's not just for customers. It's also our employees listen to it to get brought up to speed and train on and some of those kinds of things. See, that's the thing. Uh, Tim in the chat room says, I run seven podcasts for CBP. Uh, and he says, five of them are internal. And that's the one I think, I don't know if people aren't thinking of it. They should. Uh, back in the day, I used to drive about 25 minutes to Canton, Ohio to go to a sales meeting where the sales manager would say, get out there and sell boys, um, and, and girls. Uh, and we would then drive 25 miles to wherever our territory was. And it was like, you know, if we had had podcasting, they could have done that mm -hmm. as a private podcast mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there were tools for that. And then you could listen to, you know, the CE going, get out there and sell, uh, you know, on the way to the first call. Cause I always thought about it, Cause they had to pay for mileage and gas. I'm like, those are expensive meetings to have somebody go, we didn't hit our quota, get out there and sell. It was yeah. like, oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's, and I do, um, I, I see, I think we have nine podcasts now and seven of them are my responsibility. And, uh, two of them, oh uh, no, five of them are in another language. I just produce them, right? I'm there oh. and I just produce them. But um, it does, th there are some, you know, we, we figured out, even on, you said on the private, you know, you could create it yeah. internally and make it a private podcast. We thought about that for a while. The The technology gets a little screwy. So we just, we just said, hey, everything we do, we're going to do, like, it's okay for the public to hear it. Yeah. And so we've made some internal stuff. We're like, well, this, if somebody else sees us, it's not a big deal. This is, this would all be public information. And then we found some of them were great onboarding. Um, uh, so yeah. we required them or uh, suggested that our new employees use them as, as onboarding. And that worked out really, really well. So they've gotten a lot of mileage. Um, I think with the podcasts I've made, we've probably gotten as much mileage internally as we've gotten externally with them. Right. So they've been good. It's been good for the company. Yeah. I, you know, of course me, I think everybody should have a podcast, but that's, that's one when like in the early days I was telling people, no, really, this is a, this is a big money. This thing will pay for itself Yeah, in mileage well, and gas, sure. just well, doing the, an internal one. The, the marketing folks that I work with now, um, when I started doing this, we had very little marketing team, so to speak, a marketing team. Now we have quite a large team that's that we're, that I'm working with. And, the, the newer, the, you know, the folks that have been there a year or two come to me, they see the numbers and they're like, dude, you could monetize this. And I'm like, no, you don't, yeah, you don't understand. I am monetizing it with our product. Like the, it's, it's ours. Why would I, why would I introduce another, you know, somebody else into the equation and dilute the brand, right? It's yeah. our brand. I control our brand. It's advertising for us. So that's just always a hilarious conversation that I have to have. They, they see so many podcasters and maybe this, what this, this is, what, what this talks to Dave is they all listen to podcasts where they're getting outside monetization. So their first thought is we could get advertisers to do this. And I'm like, no, I am advertising for yeah. us. Well, that's, that's the goal. Yeah. That's the thing where he says, what if the thing starts to make real money? I'm like, yeah. no, don't know that you're losing it. Why? 
I mean, I, I think at this point I am done with advertising on the school of podcasting because it's the, I, I am my own advertiser. Right. And I remember when focus right said, we want to give you money. And I said, it's going to be expensive because you're bumping me. I could add a second sponsor, but you know how I feel about cramming more ads into a, a podcast. And I'm like, cause you got to bump me out. They're like, what does it take? And I gave them a number. They're like, okay. And I was like, Hmm. And then that was for three months. And that was one where I was like, uh, I should ask for more maybe, but it really is. Cause it's, it's a great branding tool. And you can really work in, you know, for lack of a better phrase, a pitch without making it really sound so pitchy, you know, and you're like, oh, well, we do this in our strengths finders course or whatever it is, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you just kind of those little casual mentions and you're delivering value on the podcast. So they already know you're good. Right. You know, that's I did an episode of uh, your podcast consultant that it was like eight reasons why every coach should have a podcast because you've when you are consistent in your schedule you are seen as trustworthy when you deliver good content you're seen as valuable and if you can kind of share a little bit about yourself they kind of get to know you and there's the whole no like and trust thing and you know so when you say oh i've got a new book or a new course or you know support me on patreon or whatever you know you're gonna have those people that actually take action yeah uh, we Yes, just yesterday I did a podcast and two LinkedIn lives and it, it, we don't typically do that much on a single day, but that's just the way the calendars worked out with resources. And uh, it's been a while. It's maybe been four months, five months since I've done a LinkedIn live, uh, out there. And I got a bunch of emails and some, you know, some LinkedIn uh, messages from folks who are like, oh, so glad you're back. Right. Mm. And, and they connect with the content and they connect with what we do. And it's a good way of, you know, it's a really good way of, of reminding them of the brand. They enjoy the time that they're there. And then we repurpose those and put them into the Clifton Strengths podcast channel, just as like, Hey, if you missed it, but I think we had 300 registered and maybe 120 showed up yesterday or something for those That's little, good. Little half hour. Yeah. And they're just kind of alternative ways for us to continue to push uh, to uh, push is probably the wrong word, but to expose the brand uh, right. publicly and, and let folks interact with it. Yeah. I, uh, Adam Curry went on vacation with his wife. How dare you? Right. Yeah. Uh, which on. is good. Well, but I mean, and seriously, you need people to take time off and take care of themselves and have fun and that whole nine yards. And uh, it was weird because they're really good. They do a show on Friday and it's usually by eight o'clock Eastern. It's it's available. So when I'm out walking Friday night, I'm listening to the podcasting 2.0 show. And what was really weird is I woke up on Saturday after going, oh, that's right. They're not. He's on vacation this week. I woke up Saturday. My brain still went, hey, you didn't listen to podcasting 2.0 yet. And I was like. Oh, that's right. He's on vacation still. So, but it was a weird thing. Now, I wasn't upset. I wasn't mad. I did see a, there was a, a thread on this on uh, Reddit and people were like, yeah, I kind of get, you know, yanked off when, uh, you know, it's not there. And I'm like, yeah, but he, he announced he wasn't going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, I always say, if you're going to take a break, let people know. And if you don't, you know, what are they going to do? Not, not pay you anymore. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I get that, but uh, it's, um, you know, it's one of those things where, it does kind of you, you and that's why we say if you can be consistent, then you become part of their routine. And so my Friday night routine is walking around the park, going grocery shopping at, at Walmart because, you know, it's Friday night. It's time to party. And and that's how Man, I roll because there's that's nobody shopping. Time. There's there's nobody's grocery shopping at Walmart on a Friday around, you know, 1030. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so it does. You become part of the routine. But here's the thing. Exactly what Jim said. When next Friday rolls around and a new episode comes out, I'm going to be like, oh, I'm so glad mm -hmm. they're back. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. Coach Dave says, uh, I've refused advertising on my, dose, my show since day one. No one offered, but I would have refused it if they did. Um, I, they always say there's a price for everything. I don't know about that, but mm -hmm. uh, it, is, it is that. We have another question here, and I'm, I'm not sure how to answer this one. Um, epileptic rants. That sounds like a great show. Uh, hey, Dave, our audio only podcast on a serious decline. Well, the first thing I would ask is what is serious? I think right now from what I've seen, it depends on what you read. I know the number of podcast episodes being created is down from like, I know. If you watch, <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. 
I think people, I think part of it is if you noticed it's think about now, I'm not saying this is the, the cause and effect here, but Spotify is kind of like, Hmm, let's, let's put that checkbook away. Shall we? Maybe we overpaid mm-hmm. for some stuff. Mm-hmm. A lot mm-hmm. of companies cut a whole bunch of people, which is horrible. I hate to hear people losing their jobs, but they did because, well, the money wasn't quite what it was. So I think some people like I'm jumping in and getting some of that Rogan money went, hey, hey, wait, what? So maybe that's some of the reason why I think also people are finding out that it's hard to make not it's not hard to make a podcast. It's hard to make a good podcast. So I don't know, but I, I, it's definitely down. I've heard I know I've had a number of people that have said my downloads are down. Um, and I would say ours, I think most of mine are a little bit, but not a ton, but you know, you're like, Hey, it used to be, you know, whatever I'll 600. And now it's, you know, 570, like I'm down 30, like what's up with that. And my guess is it might be people are doing, you know, it's kind of hard to surf and listen to a, a podcast. There might be some summer things going on, or I don't know, maybe people just want to spend time with their families and not have their earbuds in, but I've, I've seen numbers go down and I've had other, I've seen other people comment that anybody else seeing their audience kind of taking a a break for a bit. So how about you, Jim? Have you seen anything? I think it's, um, I just think we're unfocused on it at the moment. There there's other things going on. It's, there's no really big flagship shows driving that that piece. Um, I mean, it has replaced talk radio in, in a lot of, in a lot of ways. So I, I don't think it's not something I'd be like, well, this is it. This is the end. Let's there's, it's not <laughs> worth doing this anymore. We're in that consolidation phase where, you know, we've, we, the, it, the, with the Gartner hype cycle, right. There's that you, there's that, uh, you know, the very beginning hype of unrealistic expectations. Right. And then there's kind of the top of the hype cycle, which is kind of, it stagnates for a while. And then there's the, there's a trough, right, of of uncertainty where people don't know where it's going. And I think we're, it, it's a mature enough cycle that it's not going to go anywhere. But these things can't drive forward forever. They need to take a breather. They need yeah. to take a break. They got to pull back. We always we have little dips. I, I think podcasting is a medium that is well embedded in the in the ecosystem globally of folks that listen. So. We're consolidating, podcasts are consolidating, which in a lot of ways, it just means folks are dropping out. And, and I think staying in in the trough is the key. If you want to pick up listeners, right now is the time to pick up listeners as folks who don't want to do it anymore are stopping. You have an opportunity to pick up those listeners as they're looking for something. So this is not the time to waver. This is the time to fully lean in. If it is dipping, this is the time to lean in, may even pay for some advertising on some podcast players or something to pick up folks that are looking for something new. To listen. I always tell people there's the, the amount of content being created thanks to the writer and now actor strike, you know, there's going to be less content to watch. And I don't know about you, but when I logged into some of the, you know, the Hulus of the world and things like that, they're like, look, here's a movie from Jason Bateman that you never even knew he made. Cause it probably didn't get released from, yeah. you know, 20, 20- 19 and you're like i've never heard of that movie i watched an absolutely horrible movie called the donor party on hulu that i'm not approved but i was like wow that was really bad and i was like why is that like i was like oh because there's no new content yeah yeah um yeah. Uh, well, kids going back like, to school too right i mean people ah, in cars true. driving their kids so you have you've got another opportunity for as we're driving students back to school pick up that ear share that might come back. That's a good point. Um, Craig says our numbers always drop this time of year. Folks are on vacation on Europe. And I, I heard something on, I think it was pod news that August in like England, I don't know if it's a Europe or an England thing. Like they just take August off. Like they're all just like, right, we're all going to the beach um, or something. I don't know. But uh, uh, I never heard that like, the UK just like August is just like, no, nope, we're see by we're out of here. And it's like, Oh, that's kind of cool. January is um, kind of that way in Australia. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of slow. Yeah. Fred says, I think audio uh, only podcasts are still growing. Yeah, they are for the record. Uh, but the video component is more work and the laziness factor now rises to the equation. I did. Um, Chris stone is a, uh, oh, crap. I did it again. I turned off. Uh, I unstarred Fred 
and now I can't oh. get him off the screen. Thank there you. you. Um, Chris Stone is a uh, uh, awesome supporter. He's also a member of the School of Podcasting, and uh, he has castahead.net. And it's so funny because, like, remember, I, I did our first Ask the Podcast Coach artwork. I did it in Canva and had a little microphone with a whistle and that whole nine yards. And then Mark did ours, and I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, that's that's what it's supposed to look like. And I've been doing video, and, uh, yeah, Jeff is saying uh, – and Jeff's another guy that does great work with video. And so before we all poo-poo video, uh, hanging out with Jeff, I was on his uh, – Oh, Jeff, why can't I remember the name? It's New Media Show. Nope, not New Media Show. New Media Something Live. New Media Live Show? Help me, Jeff. Um, I know it's New Media Live. I, it's the third word that I'm drawing a complete brain fart on. But Jeff also is a video guy. So hanging out with Jeff and Chris last week on Basically Off and On, I was like, oh, that's that's what it's supposed to look like. Social Media News Live. I was missing the social part. Thank you, my friend. Um and uh, so I've actually went back and started learning Descript. And there's still things that, uh, oh, yeah, that's pretty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's on the video we're showing the, the, yeah. the original. But that's still on Odyssey. That's your, well, your, that's, that's our good friend your, Odyssey, <laughs> you know, the, which was owned by CBS. Uh, I'll, still- I'll be honest. This doesn't look that bad, Dave. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's blocky. It's, yeah. I mean, the use of fonts was good on this. The podcast coach font is a, it's an appropriate use of it. You've got, yeah, you use the microphone, which is debatable on whether right. some people think that's appropriate or not. Love the whistle. It's, it's actually not bad. I don't, I don't see it as that. Uh, I, yeah, I listen, what, what Mark did is awesome. Right. Yeah. But I've seen worse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it could have been, wor- <laughs> been worse. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, So um, actually, it was my clip on the social media news live show, and we sent it to Chris. (laughs) Jeff says, at least the mic is not fire. Exactly. And uh, if you go to my channel, just go to youtube.com slash David Jackson uh, and look in my shorts. You'll see. uh, That sounds weird. Just look in my shorts. uh, Then you can see what Chris did. And it was just amazing. I was like, oh, yeah, that's that's what a video guy does. It's not, you know. Ooh, looky, I can do fades. You know, it's just not my my thing. So that's always kind of interesting. But I this is where let's let's say the numbers are going down. Um, okay, why are you doing this? You know, now if you're if you're into advertising and you got to get more downloads to get that, you know, better help ad, then that's a problem. Uh, but you know, depending on your why, I that's not why I, you know, this show I do it to give out free uh podcast consulting and and to pick up the occasional patreon person which is great i get to hang out with jim cullison you know what more do you want uh so it's um that's that's why i do it so if my numbers go down i i I don't panic it's but it's not a bad i mean you know download numbers are not a bad metric to to have as part of your arsenal of things that you check on a regular basis I, i personally you know, the instant messages I get on LinkedIn or the emails that I get uh, at, at work or, or to, you know, to Jim at the average guy dot TV are much more important to me from a, from a, you know, a, a barometer standpoint, but from knowing how I'm doing, you know, I asked the, my audience the question, should I stop? And I got a few emails back that said, no, please don't like we yeah. really like it. Right. Those kinds of responses mean more to me than a thousand downloads, but Downloads are a good indicator of just how healthy things are. And they can actually indicate um, w- maybe things aren't going right technically in your channels. Like maybe you've got some things that are going on. If the numbers dip, maybe it's a good idea to check, hey, what's going on over at Apple Podcast? How is this really displaying? Like how are we, how is this being seen in Google? What kind of, I mean, looking at your stats to kind of say, is there a problem? Is there something uh, technical that I need to, think about or kind of work on. So ignoring them, and I'm not, I know this is not what people are saying. Ignoring them is not the answer, right? They are important in, in some ways. They're not everything, but they are something. And so I think it's, I think it's good from time to time to take a look and just say, Hey, how, how's it, how am I doing out there? Cause you would hate to see the numbers dip 
you didn't know, and it was because you have a broken RSS feed. Yeah. Right. Oh man. Right. Yeah. I, I know. Yeah. Um, it's funny you say that Remember how I always say you're too close to, to do your own stuff. Yeah. My show building a better Dave. Um, I use pod page, but there was some show, I think it was the podcast trailer show that I did for about eight episodes and was like, this is dumb and I quit. So I was like, Oh, you know what? I've already got this pod page set up. Let's populate it with the RSS feed from better Dave and, did a whole thing and refresh and it became building a better Dave. But I forgot that in pod page, you put in the links to Apple, Google, Spotify, and then it puts, you know, the buttons there for you. And to make a long story short, as I was kind of promoting my latest episode of building a better Dave, and I clicked on the Apple uh, link and it took me right to the podcast trailer show. And I was like, uh, Oh, yeah, ooh. Yeah. so that was one where, you know, you're too close to, uh, to see things and and but the other one was i as i'm getting the links to update those i go to google a it's got artwork that's so old my hair is black <laughs> and i was like what and i looked in and google had not updated building a better dave since june and why it's still using this old artwork i don't know so i went into the google thing they have a little question mark but it, it's pretty close to nobody's home over at google podcast we'll see if they update but uh, that that was one where you have a good point. If your numbers take a dive, go check your technology because as much as it's syndicated and you set it and forget it, you know, one one wrong character can break your whole feed. So be careful, especially with Microsoft Word, copying and pasting into your media host. Write your show notes in your media host and then copy and paste them into WordPress or whatever you're using because that's uh, that's not a good thing. So uh, we did have another question, um, and this one was from Behind the Noise podcast, and uh, they ask, uh, how hard is it to rebrand a podcast? Um, they actually just talked about this. I just did it again, Jim. I got to quit unstarring those because oh. then I lose where they are. <laughs> Anyway, um, you don't get a, a over in your chat. Uh, oh, I get here, this. I get this. It says star. hide. But do you get it? There's when you when you bring up the comment and then it scrolls away. A little, a little uh, remove hide the, the hidden thing pops up. I forget what it says. I'll have to um, see. I just know I unstarred and it goes away. And I was like, oh crap! Now okay. I can't turn it off. But um, anyway, rebranding is a piece of cake. And what you don't want to do is let's say you start a show, and it's you know the Dave Jackson Power Hour, and it just doesn't do any good because who the heck is dave jackson that's a weird name what's a power hour nobody gets it so i want to rebrand what you don't do is go okay i'm going to start a new show called marriage advice from the divorced guy all right so okay that's a little more descriptive maybe you know what it is now don't start a new show and kill the old one that's like if i drive to cleveland and all of a sudden i end up in the sandusky and i'm like wait i took a wrong turn i don't go back to akron and start going to Cleveland again. I just, you know, pivot from where I am. And they were talking about this on the feed. There was one show that wanted to rebrand. And instead, they killed their own show and started a new one. All it takes to rebrand, it's really simple. Number one, put out an episode that just says, hey, everybody, I want to let you know, on Monday, you're going to see the name of this show change. And you're going to see the artwork change. But it's the same show. We're just going to be doing blah, blah, blah. Think Kentucky Fried Chicken to KFC. So when you see that change, don't worry. I'm still here, and I am still appreciate the fact that you listen. That way, there will be an episode that's called We're Changing the Name. So when people go to episode, let's say the next episode is episode 24. When they go to episode 22 and they go, why is this called the Dave Jackson Power Hour? Now it's called Marriage Advice from the Divorce Guy. They see the episode that said, hey, we're changing the name. And in theory... People should be able to put those together. But all you got to do is change your artwork. And when you change your artwork, make sure, A, it meets Apple specs, so 1,400 by 1,400, all the way up to 3,000 by 3,000. And the file size has to be less than 500 kilobytes. But also make sure the file name is different. So if the other one was called podcastart.jpg, make it podcastartwork2.jpg, or it may not update. So change the artwork, change the name in your media host, change your description, and wait 24 hours and you're done. So, um, have you ever rebranded anything, Jim? Uh, in your yeah. Trend? We, we had n not that this opposite advice is better or worse, but we did the opposite. We, we didn't kill it. We just left 
uh, we left. So we had theme Thursday and we had six seasons mm. of it and it had a different host than, than it does now. And we decided to just start a new podcast. We called the Clifton strengths podcast, similar content than the two, than the other one, than theme Thursday. But we really felt like the, that podcast had such a strong brand. We didn't want to break it. Uh, we still get, I mean, we haven't done an episode in two years and we still get 10 or 15,000 downloads a month to it. So it's, it's obviously getting used. We didn't want to do market confusion at that point. So we just lifted up the concept and moved it over to the Clifton Strengths podcast, started a new, whole new feed, new everything. Then I did an episode uh, at the end that we put on theme Thursday that said, Hey, want to let you know, if you've made it this far, you've come to the end of the internet jump over now and subscribe to the Clifton Strengths podcast and you can join us over there for future podcasts. And uh, that new podcast now is doing what Theme Thursday, the old one, had done numbers-wise before we converted it. So you can create a new one if you want to, but I, you, you've got to do some work w w you know, to move listeners from one to the other. And we were able to do that successfully. Yeah, Uncle Mar makes a great point. If your rebrand means you're changing your website, be very careful with that, especially if you use PowerPress for your feed. Nothing wrong with PowerPress. It's a fine, upstanding podcasting plugin. But if you change your URL, you just change your feed, and now you've got a dead feed in Apple so be careful. You want to, you actually need to have them both running at the same time. So you need to kind of clone your website and then point the old website at the new website and things like that. So if you need help with that, uh, you know, we can help with that as, as well. So we but, need uh, you <laughs> okay. just, to, just so folks know <laughs> that's you. not interested. No. Okay. <laughs> that's Dave Jackson school of podcasting. Check that out. There we go. And Jeff wants to know, um, I'd love to know what the media hosts are. Is there a resource for a character count for descriptions in your episode descriptions, your show notes for a different podcast networks? I moved to a new podcast hosting company and noticed it was truncated in Apple podcast. I want to say it's 4,000 characters. Um, and the only way I ever character count is I cheat. I copy and paste it into a Google doc and under tools. I think it is. There's a word count in there for it but i wish there was something in media host that said hey you know this is where it's going to get truncated there's a great article by james cridlin i'll put a link in the show notes and it's um is this going to come on google yes oh it's not because i have a i answered this so much that um ah crap um what i'm trying to do is i have text expander i love text expander uh, and when I type in hashtag 19, here we go. Um, James has this article on, he looked at 19 different apps and is it going to let me? Yes. Okay. And it comes down to this in your media host, type your, your show notes and don't get crazy. Don't try to add a table or an iframe or things like that. You know, bolding, uh, maybe some bullet points, maybe some numbers. Don't get too crazy with that. And it should look okay, but there are apps for whatever reason that you can give them, hey, sir, here's some fine, clean HTML, and they will just just destroy it. And you're like, why doesn't it look good over there? And they're like, because um, they suck. They don't know how to make a podcast app. So um, it is kind of tricky, but I don't know of any, I'd have to think about that. I think at one point, in the old days, I think Lipson had a character count, and I don't think they do anymore. But it's I, I want to say, if you if you Google that, if you ask Uncle Google, I'm pretty sure it's a 4,000 character it limit. Is. It is. is it? Okay. Limit. Yeah. Yep. So. Although um, they don't show it all, right? What I'm finding here is I did a little search on this. It says most will, mm -hmm. most will truncate it with a read more link at yeah. the 120 to 150 character limit. Interesting. So. And that's where, in some cases, that's a whole other question is, what do you put in show notes? We had this at the School of Podcasting, and I said, well, there are two things. There's, there's show notes for the app. That's what you type into your media host. And then there's show notes, your episode description on your website. And I think this is one of those things where everybody has their own thing. So I usually write 
a paragraph, which is really hard on this show because it's like, here are the 14 things we talked about in 90 minutes. Um, but I usually it's like I'm, I'm trying to answer the question for the listener. Should I listen to this? So there's a bit of a like, here's what we're going to talk about. And then any links. Boy, uh, oh, in fact, let me uh, see if I got this queued up. There's Craig. Uh, somebody sent in and I thought I put it here. But apparently I did. We had somebody that um, sent in an email. I really could have sworn I put this because I was going to play it last week. Um, But I apparently didn't. I'm just uh, sucking all the way around here. Yeah, it's been Um, a tough week on you, Dave. It has been a tough week. Cut yourself some slack there. Uh, But anyway, um, Darren had emailed us that I mentioned about uh, a cheap lavalier mic. And it is this one. The the Power DeWise lav mic. And he said, you didn't say the name and you didn't put a link in the show notes. And I was like, oh, and it's it, you actually get two for like 39 bucks and they're not bad. And they're the, the cable on these is insanely long. So I could, you know, probably I know Jim's out there and uh, um, yeah, where Nebraska. you are. Nebraska, Nebraska, thank you. Yeah. I was going to say <laughs> Arkansas. And I'm like, it's not <laughs> Arkansas. It's, uh, it's a flyover state. It's OK. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, you know, I, the cable is long enough to where I could put a lav on Jim and be okay. So that was the name of that. But getting cable. back to show notes, he was looking for the link. So I usually try to put a paragraph to let people know this is what you're going to get out of this. Then links to whatever I mentioned, which on this show is brutal. Uh, and then, you know, links to follow the show. And that's usually it for me. And then when I go to my website, now that's where I expand it. So for like the School of Podcasting, I write a blog post first just to get my ADD brain focused on what am I trying to say here? And so that's my workflow. Mm -hmm. Uh, But um, for me, your website should have more uh, words because that's Google food. And I don't know, do you, if somebody has, I think, and, and this is just me where I think everybody thinks like me, which is really, maybe we don't want to do that. But if I open up episode notes and it's TLDR, and if you're like, what does that mean? Too long, didn't read. Uh, if I have to really scroll to find something, there was a part of me that's like, oh, I'll look at this later because we're all, you know, busy. I don't know. Well, I mean, you would write it like an article for a newspaper where you begin with short descriptions up front, right? Of So for the folks who just are going to read the, the gig, they'd get past the headline and they actually get to the article. You want to be really clear in the first couple sentences and kind of cover most of it, then begin to add layer in detail as you go, right? So that in 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 physically the way you see it, if you land on it and it's a giant paragraph for the very first thing, most people they're out. They're like, no, that's way too much. Yeah. So make sure you're breaking that up. Uh, you know, that's why in the old days on newspapers with print and even on on the web today. Um, those, if those very, very, very short paragraphs for people, we're just, it's, it's a, especially early on, if it's a, if it's a wall of text, they just, they're most likely not going to read it. Yeah. A lot of white space around it. That's why when you write a blog post, you want to break things up into, you want to use that H2 setting a lot. So it breaks things up because people don't read, they scan. Yeah. And that's where your headlines kind of let them know, ooh, where do I need to read this? And eventually they'll start to read part of it. And if it's good, they might actually go back to the top. But uh, as someone who works in support, I can wholeheartedly, without a doubt, say people do not read. Uh, and I know people achu- uh, accuse support of not reading. We read every ticket. There are times when we uh, we might sound like we're not and we're just giving you off a pre-written answer. But uh, I don't do that. So. I read everything because that saves me time and it saves you a headache. Well, so. I'm I'm on the Casto site and they've got this three part recommendation for descriptions. And I think this can apply to any of those kinds of things. But they have this first sentence, say something uh, to your listeners that they already believe is true or agree with. Right. Get that buy in from your audience. Second sentence, what well, your listeners can expect to hear it in each episode or what they can expect to hear in that episode. Right. And then third sentence, um, who is the show for, plus some keywords for search. Three sentences, kind of a nice bing, bang, boom, something they'll agree with, what they expect to hear, 
a little bit of detail in a sentence, that's probably good enough. What I do sometimes is if I have my notes from if I did an interview, I look at what questions that I ask. And sometimes I won't put the actual question, but that'll let me know. We talk about subjects such as blah, blah, blah. Just again, you're, you're trying to give people the idea of should I listen to this or not? And it sounds weird because people are like, well, what if I write enough detail? And they go, oh, yeah, that's not for me. I go, you just save them 20 minutes. And I appreciate when somebody goes, hey, this isn't for you. So that's, uh, yeah, um, Jeff says, I've told my kids. <laughs> I build my career from reading the manual and most people don't. Yeah, that's true. And there's, I remember once when I first got the pod track P4 and I'm like going through and I'm going through every single menu system, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, how do you turn on mix minus on this thing? And I finally read the manual and that's where it says, Oh, by the way, build in. And I was like, wow, but I wasted a lot of time. So when in doubt, um, in support, there used to be uh, a thing called RTFM, and F is is a uh, not fire truck. <laughs> Read the manual. Uh, yeah. Um, the uh, where'd it go? I lost it. Somebody asked about. And Tim, I see your question. We're gonna hit that in just a second. Someone had asked about: Is there any AI for podcasting? And that was Mark uh, had asked about that. I have uh, a a episode on this. If you go to podcastingresources.net there's an episode called enough podcast ai to choke a horse and it <laughs> and it talks about there's so many there's cast magic there's swell ai there's pod squeeze there's clean voice there's cap show uh there's more than that now i mean they just every time you turn around i always go god bless you for having the hope to launch the same product that's already been lost five times they all do have a little different things you know there's chat gbt i know uh Craig from Otter, uh, Otter AI. Yeah, there's a uh, uh, course, you know, Craig from livewellandflourish.com. Have you subscribed to that show yet? You should. But Craig's a good, a big uh, chat GPT guy. Mm -hmm. And there's some, like, I learned that really what these tools are doing that we're paying for, there are plugins for chat GPT. And one of them is like kind of a marketing arm that'll give you titles and write ad copy. And then another one is mm -hmm. this. And then and I was like, now you got to pay for it. This is not the free chat GPT. And I went, well, that's all these tools are doing. They're just putting a name on it and calling it cast magic. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and I was that's, like, yeah. yeah, so it's just you resellers. Know, you pay, They're just resellers of it. Yeah. You pay for things in time or money. So you can have, you can pay in time to go figure out how to add a plug in to chat GPT and blah, blah, blah. Or you could just pay somebody else who's already done it and, and done some things for it. So the, this morning I was in YouTube posting the most recent episode of home gadget geeks and it gave me some titles um uh you know uh suggestions so yeah. it, it was terrible it was and it was just one so not titles but it was a title suggestion so i put my title in and then right below it i said do you want to use this title and it was it started with the episode number <laughs> and then it nice. it had it, it had just a bunch of words like it, it almost was keyword stuffing itself and uh, I was like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't want that. So I left some feedback and I said, boys, nice, nice try. You got some work to do. Like yeah. th this, th I don't know what you're using, but it's not very good. Now the potential is awesome <laughs> with YouTube, right? Because in theory, they've transcribed it already and they should have some, they have Bard. Is it Bard? They have their version of chat GPT. Um, titling has gotten a uh, uh, chat GPT on titling is pretty good. If you give it some text and say, give me 10 titles for this, it'll do that for you in the free version. So, you know, you can it, it at least give you some good ideas, but yeah, Dave, the inside YouTube, uh, I don't know if everybody has it yet, but it's starting to suggest titles, which I find very, very interesting. If they get yeah. better than what I saw this morning, that could be helpful, but the, the one I got this morning was not very good. Well, the other thing that I'm starting to see, I think we're going to get some kaleidoscope action here for, uh, maybe not. No, good. Is uh, this is, uh, I met these guys in London and it is now AI for video. So you basically upload your file and it, and, and like, and you always have to remember any AI is going to get you 75, 85% of the way there 
and it was kind of cool. I mean, I uploaded this show once and it spit out about nine different clips and I was kind of like, oh, all right. Uh, it's clipgen uh, .io. I'll have a link in the show notes. They do have an affiliate program. So that's, uh, but I met them in London and they emailed me like, Hey, we have an affiliate program. I'm like, well, I need to look into this now, but it was, it was interesting. You can pick if it's vertical or horizontal and you can zoom in on all sorts of stuff. But in terms of the, can I just upload it and magic comes out the other side, it's magical, but I still had to go in. Cause there are times when I was like, Oh wait, they have the next two words of the next sentence. I need this to stop about, you know, 0.7 seconds sooner kind of stuff. So it's, uh, it's interesting, a lot of fun tools and things like that, that, uh, you know, I'll be interested to see where it goes. Cause again, this is where we say, you know, well, this is as bad as it's going to get. And it'll be interesting to see, you know, moving forward. I saw, um, pick, hmm, pictory, I think. Yeah. Pictory was, uh, there was a webinar that, uh, Deidre over at cap show did with this and they were showing how you could get a snippet from cap show, uh, upload the video to pictory search for that phrase. And then it did the whole thing where if you wanted to, you could have it do like AI voiceover mm -hmm. and then B roll and all sorts of stuff that was like, I was like, well, this video tool is getting and like all the AI, like let's do all the transcription stuff for audio. But now they're, you know, they're working their way to video and I'm sure there's tons more stuff. I'm uh, Jeff and, and Chris probably know a ton of those stuff, but it's, um, uh, it's interesting as you, uh, you move forward. Uh, Rich wants to know, hey, Jim, are you using vidIQ or TubeBuddy? Those extensions will give you title suggestions. And uh, it's interesting. I have TubeBuddy. I bought it from Miss Eileen many moons ago. And then Tim Schmoyer, who is uh, one of the guys I go to for YouTube advice, uh, he is using vidIQ. And I want to say he somehow partnered with him. But I've, I, those are the two I hear about. Do you use either of those, Jim? I do not. No. Yeah. No. So I'll check Tube, them out now. <laughs> yeah. TubeBuddy is the epitome for me of I bought it and never read the manual. So anything I use at TubeBuddy, it's because I'm stumbling through it and I really should uh, take my time. And, and, you know, again, I've probably got a tool over that. I'm like, oh man, this is so cool. And I haven't been using it for, you know, months and months and months. So it, it's like, mm, you got to be, you know, take the time. Otherwise, you're just burning your money in some cases. Uh, speaking of that, I did find a, I was trying to show it in my website's being wonky. I found a cool, I, I don't play much in WordPress. Or I shouldn't say I don't play as much with WordPress anymore, but there's a cool page builder. And the thing I hate about page builders, and I'm trying to verify this, it's called Spectra. And what I like about it versus other ones where, like if you use Elementor, and let's say you use the Elementor plugin and later you turn off the Elementor plugin, any page you made with Elementor just turns into gibberish. And this uses the core WordPress language, I guess. And it was pretty sweet. I was playing with it last night and it uses all the, the blocks. I know Jim, uh, you said you were playing with WordPress with getting more into blocks but it takes the blocks that are in WordPress and kind of puts them on steroids. So I, I had one where it was like, put in the posts and it did this. And then you could say, do you want to show the date or not? Do you want to show the title? Do you want to show the image? How long do you want the uh, excerpt to be? It was really pretty slick and it just made it easy. And uh, I was like, okay. And then they have another uh, theme called Astra. It's a whole same company. They have a plugin, but their whole thing is lightweight, powerful WordPress tools that help in SEO. And I'm like, well, there's check, check, and check of what people are looking for. So if you're a WordPress person and like for me right now, if you go to the school of podcasting slash episodes, you will see that I'm using Elementor and it makes this nice, cool thing. I use second line themes and then Elementor. And unfortunately I've told it like, Hey, put like 12 episodes on the front. So it's got this little, grid of that and then you'll see at the bottom of the 12 where you can go to the next page or you can scroll down and see the exact same thing repeated and i've looked into this page i have deleted and recreated and there's some sort of i'm sure plug-in thing uh, or theme thing but my episodes are duplicate 
And it's not like it just keeps repeating. Like you think, oh, it does it do it a third time and a fourth? No, it's just two. And I was like, that should be able to look at the source of that and figure out what it is. And so that's what kind of led me to like, is there a thing that actually uses WordPress to do this that uh, <laughs> I can recreate it? So um, do you remember what theme you're using on your WordPress stuff? It's oh, probably, it's a good, it's an older yeah. theme. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's one it's of those good. things like you kind of said it once you get it done, you're like, you just make posts. You yeah. don't really think about it. Well, and Randy Walker was on my show last week and is a WordPress guy said, your theme may not be block enabled. That may be, or mm. not designed to work well with blocks. We got it all figured out. And, you know, I'm on 6.3. Blocks came a long time ago. Yeah. I'm just now figuring out. I mean, just in the last two weeks, I've been, <laughs> this is bad to admit, but I've been doing, uh, you know, I've been doing HTML code the whole time. Yeah, I, I, I have. Code, <laughs> right? I think it's called the classic, the classic something, or whatever it is. It's like, hey, I don't want to do blocks plug in. And it makes it yeah. look like the old version of where I've been on that forever. So I was like, all right, maybe I need, cause yeah. I was not a big fan of blocks. I could never quite get them to do. Um, it's, it's pretty handy now. I think yeah. they got most of the bugs worked out. You know, example that if I go to put a link in, you put the link in and a, a editor box pops up and says, do you want this to be the text or do you want it to be a link? And if you just click link, then it formats it for you, which is kind of nice. You don't have to do the code on that. So there are some things about blocks. You can set up um, block templates so that if your posts are going to yeah. have the same information them all the time, you can have a template to go to for your workflow. That may be handy. It may it may not be. I'm getting better. I mean, I, I listen, I've been doing it for a week, but I am better this week than I was last week using blocks. And I'm still flipping back and forth between the visual editor and the code editor just yeah. as I'm kind of figuring some of these things out. Like I figured out, I'm going to embed a YouTube video in using the block function of the YouTube instance. It's easier just to add a new one and put the link in as opposed to trying to edit the old one. So that's just one of those things with the code. I'd always just go back in and take the 11 digit YouTube code. Just yeah. Copy and paste. You're done, right? Well, if I'm going to use blocks, it's better if I just put the, you know, add the YouTube block and put the link yeah. in and then I'm done. So it's learning things like that. Always fun. Learning new things. Yay. Learning curves. Woohoo. The, hey. the, yeah. The, listen, the block ID is not a bad one. It has not been received well by some in the WordPress yeah. community. So yeah, there, the new that. version of the new version of WordPress, they have kind of changed some things in their interface, made it a little easier. I was watching a video on that last night and um, yeah, it's because uh, there are reusable blocks yep. or, or dynamic blocks. So you could have a block, that is for your newsletter or whatever you want, and then put that block in a bunch of episodes, and then you change that block in one place, and it changes across your whole website. I was like, oh, yeah. that's kind of cool, because yeah. that's the uh, uh, pod page has a signature feature that does that. But uh, mm -hmm. you know what's not hard to figure out? That's right, becoming an awesome supporter. You just got to go to askthepodcastcoach.com slash awesome, and you can be an awesome supporter and, um, you know, support us it's great you'll feel better <laughs> how's that for a sales pitch I, um, your, your well-being will be higher if you yeah, that's right us. yeah it'll yeah. feel good you won't feel guilty watching this live going Correct. i should be paying for this you can say no i already <laughs> am um you can also join me over at the school of podcasting like chris stone did and uh nancy did this week and craig has for a while uh we've got courses we got coaching and community we had a we do a thing every friday lunch with dave and it's slowly the word is getting out that that's actually fun and it's uh the next episode of the school of podcasting is going to have a small clip from that so you get unlimited one-on-one -on -one coaching so if you want to hang out with dave and pick my brain some more you can do that there and uh right now in august that's right it's the back to school special this is where i would play the air horn sound effect if i knew where it was but uh yeah in august if you buy a yearly subscription uh, you get a free Samson Q2U shipped to you. Brand new, by the way. It's not like the one in my bookcase. It's actually a new one. So you, you'll you get that that little baby stand that makes you hunch over like a hunchback. That's great. Uh, and Tim, we didn't answer his question yet. We'll answer his question in a minute about speaking of that. But uh, our Spotlight Support of the Week is, again, have you subscribed to this yet? Come on. Livewellandflourish.com slash follow will take you over to where you can just uh, subscribe in Apple and Spotify and all that stuff. It's a really good show. Thank you so much for your support, Craig. We deeply appreciate that. 
And we mentioned PodPage earlier. If you want to try PodPage, my affiliate link is trypodpage.com. And if you want to learn PodPage, learnpodpage.com will take you to a free course on that. And if you need more Jim Collison, well, who doesn't, right? The average guy.tv will get you right over to where you can check out Home Gadget Geeks. And uh, we are still on the road. We Thank you, Craig. We're closer to 40 than we were. But uh, if you haven't become an awesome supporter, you should. Shouldn't you really? I mean, isn't it time that you do that? So askthepodcastcoach.com slash awesome. And I know last week I said I was going to think about leaving Patreon. And that's as far as I got on that. Um, because they switched their payment processing to Scotland or Ireland or something that ends in land. And it did not go well. And I've, I've heard where, uh, you know, that's not, uh, people kind of get upset when you mess with their income. Shocking on that, you know? Um, let's see here. Uh, Tony has a tip for us. Uh, it says, whenever bringing up a new post live, be sure to add the URL to Google's URL submitter. Be sure to get all the posts indexed as soon as possible. Yep. Uh, that's one of those things. I forget what they're... I, there's a there's another thing too that's like the hubbub bub of the sub hub bub sub thing that <laughs> it's a bunch of really weird words put together that will do that. So um, Google will eventually crawl it, but but you you get it in there right away. You kind of prompt them, say, "Hey, look at this." That puts it in their database, um, and it's a little bit faster. It's a good tip. Tony's coming in on LinkedIn, by the way, too. He's yeah, he is in. He is listening via LinkedIn. That is something. Again, talking about things that I'm not getting the most out of, I need to, I, I thought it was interesting, and I might have mentioned this before, I bought some course on Udemy because it was like, you know, a dollar fifty or something that they had discounted it to. But Udemy said, hey, do you want to schedule some time to learn this? And you can put it on your calendar. And I was like, oh, that's pretty slick. But LinkedIn is something for years that I've been going, I really should spend more time over at LinkedIn because, you know, for me, the the number one way to use podcasting is to market your, we talked about earlier, right? Uh, promoting your, your business with that. And, you know, maybe go hang out where people have businesses that might not be such a bad idea. And yet here I sit, I've listened to a few episodes. I've met uh, LinkedIn gurus at different events and things like that. I'm like, Oh yeah, I need to I need to go back and spend more time on that. And yet I don't. So that so is uh, kind of fun. Jim, you you mentioned that you've been playing with WordPress and the new blocks. What's your? It's like you said, you're getting better. Is it on a scale of frustrating? Like ten is like I'm ready to throw my computer out the window. Mm, mm, three. It, three. It's actually not as hard. It was super helpful to have Randy after the show because <laughs> I admitted during the show I'm like, you know, I know there's this new blocks thing. He's like new. <laughs> he was. He's like Jim. It's been around for a couple of years. Yeah. And then I was like. I was like, I never really figured it out. So after the show, he sat me down. He's like, Hey, let's go through a few. Let's he goes, share your screen with me. So we, we get into them. He's like, right, click on this, check on this, click here, do this. Oh, there, there's the blocks. And he taught me how to switch in between the block and the visual, you know, the visual editor and the code. Editor. Yeah. I was like, Oh, this is actually really helpful. And so um, kind of what I've learned is not to go all in on the thing from day one. Like I changed a few things and I published the episode. Then this week I went back and learned a few more things like the tip on the YouTube embedding a YouTube video in there. Uh, the block, the block, um, the way the block does it is actually better than the way I was doing. And after I inspected the code, I'm like, oh yeah, this is actually better code. So it's more dynamic. Uh, for mobile and for, for the, for um, PC. So I, um, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to start using the block. So Dave, I try to pick up little things at a time each week. I'm posting it. Then I'm going to try and teach myself something new or see if I can learn something different about the blocks to get in there. So it's not terrible. Um, and if you're, if you're in WordPress and you're not using it, that's probably worth a look, but Hey, whatever works best for you, you know, I'm just finding it's kind of nice to be able to, I want to get to the point where I do have a template that I use every week. Cause I am for the, for the, for home gadget geeks, it's the same post every week. I'd go in and change some things. So it's different, right? Add some text and stuff, but I'd love to have a template set up and ready to go that I just pull up, put the title in, 
put my stuff in and publish and make it that clean. Uh, it'll uh, maybe four or five months to get to get to that point. Yeah, I do that with uh, Text Expander, but also on yeah, yep. the podcast rodeo show. That's on Captivate, and Captivate has it's super slick. And then I'm just like, oh, which template do you want to use? And I'm like, this one. And it's already got here's the title of the show. I just fill in a form, and it's yeah, it's done. Yeah. It makes it super simple. Yeah. The other thing I thought, and I, I for our audio fan friends, I will uh, I will uh, try to explain what I'm doing here, and that is share your screen there we go i'm like where is it um i finally got behind the scenes i was talking about um this plugin spectra and so when you add it it's free they do have some pro stuff but this is i mean i'm not sure how many blocks there are but you can add a container so i could say hey let's let's first add a container and i could say oh how many columns do you want that container to have and then you just have all these headings countdown timers block quotes what i did was I added some down uh, post grid. So if I said, hey, let's let's do this, and then it goes in and it finds your posts. And so here, over here, I can now click on this and go over to style and pick how many columns I want. And it's just crazy. So it's uh, it's free. And I to me, it just, I like the fact that A, it uses WordPress, and then B, they added more things in there. Uh, Cause some of this stuff you're like, well, that's just like Elementor. And I'm like, yeah, but, and this is what I need to, to figure out is I want to go in today and turn off that plugin and see if my page is still there. My, my default answer is no, it's still going to be gibberish. It's just, just because they wrote it in WordPress language. I'm sure there's stuff in the plugin, but um, it just seemed a lot easier. I know with Divi and Elementor, you have to go in and like, I want to edit this with Elementor. And it's like, hold on. I got to fire up the engine, you know, and granted it's, it's really flexible and things like that. But there are times when uh, I know with Divi, I, I just seemed like it was like asking me like, okay, what is the color of the outline? And I'd be like, okay, it's black. And it's like, how thick do you want the shadow of the line of the, I'm like, I really don't need this much detail. I just wanted to, you know, it's kind of crazy. So that's always uh, kind of nuts. Um, well, and I, you know, so I'm not trying to solve any problems by going to blocks. It was just one right. of those, it was one well, of those opportunities where, you know, the, somebody's like, Hey, have you, have you tried this? And, and I've been avoiding it and you know, it, the old way worked for me. Uh, I, but, but it, doing what I do, I, I thought, you know, I, I actually need to know something about this. If I'm going to, if I'm going to be on a show called ask the podcast coach, and I really didn't know anything about blocks, well, here's a good opportunity to learn. So diving in it, it actually made more work for me than it saved to begin with, but I'm kind of yeah. hoping in the future, that's the direction WordPress is headed <laughs> or is, has headed. <laughs> yeah. Maybe is the right way to say it. Right. Well, that was um, it. It was just, yeah. to me, I was kind of like, all right, it's time to start using the new stuff. And it's just, it really boils down to, we like to be comfortable and I, I know how to do it in this thing. And I was like, well, there might be some more features and things of that nature. So yeah, you, yeah, you right move on. on. Um, here's a fun question. We, we get this every now and then it says, uh, hello everyone. Um, I'm starting a podcast next Friday. I'll record then my podcast is on public health. I need topics to speak on. I feel not prepared enough to speak on the ones I already, uh, I already, and that's the end of that sentence. I have already, I see. Uh, any suggestions will be welcome. And that's where I kind of go, hmm, I know you said next week, but there's there's no rule that says you couldn't wait another couple weeks. And I know I've heard Daniel J. Lewis, I've heard a bunch of people say, don't write out a script, but just write up 10 topics that you're going to talk about. And if you can't come up with 10 topics, maybe now is not the best time to start the podcast. It's not a, you should never podcast. It's like, maybe now is not the time to, uh, to start a podcast. So when I saw that, I was kind of like, Hmm, you know, and it's hard to come up with topics, especially the longer you do it and things that they, for me, the, the, the last episode I did was based on, and as is this week are things that I'm hearing in my own community. And I'm like, Oh, if they have a question, then somebody else is asking that question as well. So, uh, you know, it's it's one of those things where I always say, just be where your audience is. Uh, to answer her question, what should I talk about? Go over to Amazon and search for your topic 
And most books have a preview where you can read the, the term, the uh, table of contents and things like that. That might give you some ideas after you look out over a couple books, things like that. And then again, there's YouTube, there's Reddit, there's all sorts of places where you can see, go to Facebook groups. I'm in so many Facebook groups, but I never, I just lurk. I'm just listening to see what people are struggling with. Uh, when I went to podcast movement, um, whenever that was out in Las Vegas, and I heard the phrase overwhelm, like this is just overwhelming. Mm-hmm. I was like, I need to do an episode on how to deal with being overwhelmed because you're learning new stuff and that whole nine yards. So um, Coach Dave says, uh, I have the formula. I pick 10 frequently asked questions and 10 should ask questions. Ooh, there's a good one. Uh, like uh, somebody in Reddit today poked the bear and they they brought up listen notes. And they're like, is this BS? And I'm like, yes. So if you hear anybody saying, you know, I'm in the top 1%, you should run away from those people. Um, so if you have 10 frequently asked questions and 10 I should ask questions, well, then you got 20 episodes right there. So you're ready to go. So, um, and that's another one too. You could go to chat GPT. You could go answer the public.com is another one where you can just type in your topic and it'll show you what people are searching for. You can do that in Google. I called it uh, Google. I think it was bingo where you start to type in a word and it'll kind of guess what you're searching for. And if it's guessing for that, that's uh, something else. But if you're not sure what to talk about, don't fire up the microphone yet. Do do a little research, figure out who, again, uh, Tony was talking about it. You got to know why am I doing this and who is it for? I say that that's, you know, if I got paid a nickel for every time I've said that, I, I would be retired by now. Because if you just talk about the stuff you want to talk about because you want people to whatever, give you money, spread the word, whatever, that might not be entertaining enough to hold the the audience. And if you just talk about what they want to talk about, but you don't get anywhere close to achieving your goals, we were talking earlier about how, there are other things to measure than downloads. Well, that's going to burn you out. So it's, it's always kind of tricky to, uh, to find the mix of the why and the who and where those overlap. That's, that's where you're going to find content that keeps people energized, keep you energized. So um, you don't do that. How do you, Jim, do you have any input going back to the fact that you podcast for work? Do you get to suggest ideas or is this something that another team comes in and goes, here's what the topic is and you yeah. just get to, you know. Yeah. A little bit of both. Uh, I've had our marketing teams come to me and say, Hey, we're going to create a pillar page. We want to create some content for it. Can you do these five things? We'll set it up with these people. And then you're going to do the interview. Then I've done, and we do uh, like case study uh, style format, you know, where we go in and interview a customer. I just did one of these yesterday, interview the customer. What was the problem? What did you implement from a solution? What was your success, right? Just a case study, a case study format. So a little bit of both, but it, uh, uh, initially, you know, the idea when, when they started thinking about they were going to do these, this build this coaching community and they wanted a way to keep them um, educated and, and, and on topic and motivated. I was like, Hey, I got a way to do this. <laughs> it's called a podcast. And they said, what's a podcast? And of so, course. I mean, it, it was early. I mean, it was yeah. super early when we were, when we first started doing this. So, um, but I knew, ex- I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt what we needed to do before we'd even done the first one. I knew what it was going to look like. I knew now we've changed some things and I've gr- grown and learned and some stuff, but I had a very clear vision of, we were going to interview coaches who had, were in this business and we just wanted their experience. That's what we we're going to do. It was just an interview show. And I said, I can do a thousand of those, you know, no yeah. problem. Just give me people and I can do a thousand of those. And I have, you know, in the there 10 you years, <laughs> you know, uh, maybe a couple thousand of those. So I was going to say, I know you've been doing a while. Yeah. we got a lot out there. Coach Dave says, I don't think we're ever perfectly prepared to talk about any subject. I give it a hundred percent of my best for a defined time. And after that, I cite my sources, check my ego at the door, stay, stay humble and publish. Yeah, that's it. And I will say things like, I remember I, I did an episode on uh, the one I was talking about Spectra, that, that plugin. And I said, look, I've only used this for like four days, but from what I've seen so far, it's pretty cool. So, you know, as much as I'm excited about this, I want you to know that ahead of time. The other question that I I'm looking at this going, why didn't I bring this up sooner? This again is from the, the school of podcasting uh, group. And um, Nancy asked this question. She said, is there anything new 
that is catching people's attention, that is growing your audience. Because we talk a lot about on the show that people want to grow their audience. And I think that I thought about this. The one thing that catches my attention, and it sounds kind of like, duh, but it's a good show. Like when I hear when I heard Craig's show, I was like, oh, wow, this is, you know, uh, obviously somebody who's thought this out. Um, he's it's not just, you know, you you fired up and it's two guys going, hey, man, like, let's do it Rogan style and they waste your time. So I think one thing that makes you stand out is a, you know, decent audio quality. That doesn't mean you spend five thousand dollars. You spend sixty nine bucks on a um, on a, you know, Samsung Q2U. That'll get you there. Uh, and then just, you know, I, I, I was working with a radio guy, uh, and I'll, I'm going to talk to him later today, but radio guys have old habits that need to die uh, a little bit. And that is he kept doing, cause in radio, you, you kind of broadcast like you're standing in an office and your audience is in the hallway walking by. So you constantly say, Hey, I'm talking with Jim Collison here. Yeah, you don't need to do a reset in podcast. You might, if you want to reinforce the brand or something like that. So, uh, but to me, just having a good show, I think makes you stand out. Cause there are so many really, really bad ones, but then you get into, you know, appearing on all the other stuff. But that was, I think the thing that threw me for a loop was new things people are doing. And I was like, Hmm. Cause there's the whole appear on other shows use social media, buy ads where available, you know, promote your show. But I think the big one to me that just makes shows stand out is when they're, you know, to the point with great content that fits me like a glove. I don't know what do you, can you think of anything that makes a show stand out? It, well, entertaining in the sense that it's, and this is the hard part. It, yeah. you, you don't want the entertainment to be overpowering for the content, right? Unless you, unless you do, I mean, it all depends on why you're coming to the, I don't personally listen to comedy podcasts or entertainment podcasts exclusively. I'm always looking for education in the stuff that I'm doing, but I love it when I have the education with some humor and I love the dynamic. This is why I love this show so much. I love coming on, you know, I've done 450 of these things with you is because it, it fits the style that I like to listen to, which is people talking to each other. So a little bit of humor and some content and you learn a few things. Listen, I learn as much. I mean, today I've learned three or four things already that I'm like, okay, I made marks on these things. I'm going to go back and check them out. Like I like to learn as well. So for me, the edutainment style is kind of what I like. And I like this, back and forth we could add a third person uh, uh maybe if it, it still it would still be there but i like this style so i don't know i don't know if that answers your question but that's what i like yeah and then uh tony has a great point and that is look at somebody who's having success and reverse engineer i do that a lot with jordan harbinger yeah, um, yeah. jordan harbinger is a guy that gets hundreds of thousands of downloads an episode and it looks like he's all over the place because he's interviewing somebody from the FBI and then somebody from this and somebody from that, and then he'll interview Kobe Bryant. But they're all through the lens of critical thinking. Mm -hmm. So he has, you know, all those people talked about the same subject, even though they had different backgrounds. Uh, so, yeah, the, the thing that I, I forget what, oh, uh, YouTube. I'm, list, I'm listening to the YouTube formula. This is a huge, this is the guy that coaches Mr. Beast. He wrote the book. It's a pretty good book. And he said the problem that a lot of people do is they will. They'll, they'll look at, oh, wow, you know, um, I'm going to try to be serial or I'm going to try to be, you know, Joe Rogan or whatever. And the strategy that works for them does not 100 percent mean it's going to work for you because it's a different audience. So if I try to do a four hour podcast because I, I think I'm Joe Rogan, but the people I'm trying to attract don't have four hours to listen to a pod that is not going to work. So yeah, definitely look at what they're doing for strategies and try it. I think that's the other thing I see a lot of people are like, yeah, my show's not growing. What are you trying? Well, I've done this. I've done that. Done that. Okay. What else are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, well, keep trying. It's, you know, I think that's one of the kind of uh, characteristics I think of, of successful podcasters is they didn't just go, well, that didn't work. All right. Well, I guess we'll quit now. So yeah, one size does not, fit all so um yeah well tricky. and we say this a lot but 
be yourself because you can't fake it. You can't be somebody else that long. Um, you know, you're yeah. eventually it's going to come through. You, you are going to come through. So start with you, be you, get comfortable with you, find the best parts of you and use them all the time, right? The strength, it's a strengths based methodology, right? And, and, you know, that may attract a ton of people or it may attract five, it, but it, it, the, the five you get are five privileged privileges that you have. Yeah. You are privileged, privileged to have them. And, um, and, and t- take, you know, take good care of the five or 500 or 5,000 that you've, that you've attracted to it. So that's, that, that would be what I would say, be you. Well, that's it. My, my last episode was, a yeah, it was about finding your voice and really finding your voice is your voice is already there. It's just got a bunch of, of what Randy Cantrell would call head trash. You got a bunch of head trash there. And once you <laughs> peel away the imposter syndrome and nobody's going to listen to me and all this other stuff, you just be yourself. And um, I talked about Brenda, who's a member of the school of podcasting and she was trying to kind of be NPR and all this other stuff. And her one friend, again, you need a friend that will tell you the truth that said, like you're not being you. And so, cause I asked her, she sent me her second version of her first episode. I go, this is so much better. Not that the first one was bad, but like, what did you do? And she goes, I, I guess I was just being myself more. And I go, exactly. So it it's, that's a whole, I swear I should be like a podcast therapist. I should be forget podcast consultant. My title should be podcast therapist because half the time I'm just helping people get over their themselves really. And yeah, so kudos to what Jim said and just be yourself. And that actually then helps set your show apart. How do I stand out? Well, you're like nobody else. And so you end up sounding and acting and being like no other podcast. So yeah, that doesn't mean you can't get better by the way. Mm. Like, I think sometimes we think that like, well, that's just me. I'm just going to be me. And if I say, uh, and, um, and, and, you know, I lose track of things and I'm all over the place. Well, I mean, you can still do that if you want to, but there are, there are some tips and techniques and some things that we can do here where we can get better at it. So there's that, there, there is that balance there too, of be the best of you, but continue to get better at being you like evaluate yourself, listen to your content, go back. Like just what you said, Dave, get somebody besides your mom or maybe even your mom. My mom was super critical of everything I did. (laughs) So thanks mom. (laughs) Listening to her was not, not always uh, bad advice. Uh, She, you know, like she, you know, she'd say things like that's it. (laughs) You know, you're like, well, geez, mom, thanks. I I thought I'd get a little bit more than that, but Anyways, get somebody to critically, like you said, to get cr- give you some feedback. You can get better at these things. You can get better at the way you, you you project. You can get better at your cadence. You can get better at your vocal quality. You can get better at your content. Those things you can get better at. So I don't want to paint a picture of just be you and that's it. Be static. Right. Continue to be learning. That's a great point. One of the things I, I mentioned earlier, my my first job out of college, I would drive to Canton to go to these meetings and like giant banners, fluorescent yellow with giant letters that just said constant improvement. Yeah. And it was everywhere. And that really got ingrained that the whole, the culture of that job was phenomenal. It was re- the, uh, the CEO was an ex Dean of a college. So he had a very educational slant to everything, but that is something that between that and the dead poet society, uh, I am always carpe diem and trying to learn like every day. It's kind of like, okay, what did we learn today? We learned that you don't plant grass before it rains. As much as it needs water, it will wash away all of your seed. So you got to find something to, you know, do that. Unless and, you put straw down. You could put the gra- a little yeah. straw will help hold it in place. It 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 did, but it didn't. <laughs> it, it it doesn't work if you have a monsoon come through your town. There you go. I just joke. <laughs> but you, you learn fun. stuff and um, you know, then you get better. And that's why, you know. How long you 13 years? How long have you been doing this, Jim? 14? Yeah, 13, something like 13. that. 13. Yeah. yeah. I know I'm 18. So it's like oh, after a while, I, yeah, never do math on a yeah. podcast. That's not good. No, no. But uh or maybe it was oh yeah. nine. I can't remember. I can't remember. I you know, <laughs> we I always I always have to go back and check. I think it was oh nine. So that would be 14, 13, 14, something like that. There we go. But uh thanks for everybody showing up. Uh Jim, any idea what's going on with the uh Home Gadget Geeks this week? Yeah, just uh, uh just put it out. Jay Franzi uh joins me. I think he listens to this show as well. 
And uh, we spend a little time thinking about the impending, you know, student loan payments are due in October again and wondering just how much money is going to come out of the economy for that. And so we talked about discount using tech for discount, like discount sites, coupon codes, some of those kinds of things. Capital One. I, I have uh, an online, and I went to Amazon, and they're like, "Hey, wait! Before you book, go to that microphone, right. there's a brand, right. there's a brand new one over eBay." And I was like, mm-hmm. "Really?" I go over in yeah. the box, never been opened, saved me sixty bucks, and yeah. then I earned like three dollars and sixty four cents for I don't know why, but I'll take three dollars and sixty four cents. So yeah, you think like Slick Deals and Honey, some of those Honey yeah. now owned by PayPal, right? Uh, you think about those, and maybe a little advice of put it in the cart and leave it. You might get an email the next day that has a discount code or yeah. ship it, right? So <laughs> we talk about all that. It's posted right now, homegadgetgeeks.com. Yeah. Uh, on the School of Podcasting, it's one of those stew episodes where I've got a lot of little baby topics that aren't really big enough for one. So some of these we've talked about, like, what do I do with my files? Uh, a couple other tools and resources. So that'll be coming up on the school of podcasting.com. Thanks to... Uh, Mark over at podcastbranding.co and Dan over at based on a true story podcast.com. Thanks to the awesome 16 people that made it to the end in the chat room. So I always appreciate you being here. Tony, thanks for joining us. John, Tony is new. Be sure to like, and subscribe. Definitely subscribe. Even if you never come back, I got turned down from Canva for an affiliate program because I didn't have 5,000 people on YouTube. I was like, bite me Canva. Really? Yeah. Get like, out there. Hit that like button right now and subscribe <laughs> right now. We'll see you later, everybody.